All right. In this video, I want to show you how you can uh, register your scans to ground coordinates if you have them pre-established, or if somebody actually shot in your control, and uh, you can this way register your scans even without them being adjacent to each other. So what I like to do first is uh, I start with my coordinates, which happen to be uh, or or are easiest if you create them. Uh, export them into a CSV file. A CSV is a comma-separated file. You can then open them in Excel. Excel lets you just at least look at them and kind of rearrange them if you didn't export them in uh, easting, northing, elevation format. So what we see over here is actually our point number, our easting, our northing, and our elevation. These have all been adjusted already for the centers for the uh, sphere centers that we were using for registration in the field. So this value is not a ground value for elevation, but actually contains the, the, the height difference between the ground and then adding the uh, elevation to the actual center of the sphere that was sitting on a pole. Everybody's targets are different, so I'm not going to say what values we were using, but as long as you know, then you can adjust them. We usually use uh, fixed height poles, so we can adjust all of the targets with just one value, one number. But uh, once you have this file created, which in my case says DDC cont.csv, we can just grab it from the file explorer and we can move it into scene. Scene inherits and figures out that, oh, a CSV file must be references, creates a new folder for you, and dumps everything into it. Now, again, I because I don't trust anything, I usually check what the values are for just a random point. So if I double-click this, you always want to look at your values here for your easting, northing, and your elevation. And I like to double-check that those values are the same. So if we're seeing... I don't have my decimal digits, but here we go. Let's make some decimal digits. Uh, let's get some decimal digits over here. So I should be able to actually see these values in scene. And I can see 552.277, and my elevation 4897. That's it. So I know it imported properly. This is uh, crucial if you do not have your units set properly. So when you're importing and exporting and you know you're in feet, make sure that scene is actually reading it. Uh, feet for import and feet for, well, display too. So, all right. Uh, now we have a canvas, which means we have the actual coordinate system in here. I will now proceed and actually grab some raw scans that I have. I will grab intentionally, this was all done in a linear fashion, but what I'll do, I'll intentionally grab the very first scan. And then let's say we'll grab scan number 13, just arbitrarily. And these are marginally, or well, actually uh, offset by a huge horizontal uh, shift. And there's probably about, I don't know, I don't want to say probably about 1600 feet in between them, so they should have nothing in common. So let's do this. Let's just hit save. Okay, we're saved. Once again, what I like to do is load pretty much all my scans just so that it's easier for me to work with them and not have to selectively load them. And again, it's easy to do that because I only have two scans that I'm trying to load. Again, if you have a lot of scans, you wouldn't necessarily want to load all of them. Okay, what we have to do now is if you don't have your targets declared as far as uh, what kind of type, uh, what radius or what kind of targets you're actually using. I was using spheres um, that had a specific radius 
and it's easiest because they're all usually metric. What I do is to make my input for the uh, targets easier, I switch my display units to meters, hit apply, and then in my matching, I can go into my spheres and actually verify that I have them. And uh, if you notice, this is the sphere type that I actually used for this job. They are 230 millimeter spheres, so the radius for a 230 millimeter sphere is 0 0.115 meters. So this is correct. I can switch this back, back to feet, US survey feet. Okay, and let's see if I can register these guys. So right click, operations, registration. Uh, first thing that you actually want to do is you want to identify targets and those targets would have to be done via uh, pre-processing. We'll save changes, we'll say pre-processing and have seen do nothing for me. I like to usually do everything manually so I'm, um, I don't want to have my pictures. I just want to do one step and that's I just want the software to go ahead and look for the spheres in these two scans. So hit OK and let it search for the targets. Alright, we had some targets that were recognized. Let's go and actually look at them. This is why I like not to do all my targets automatically because it finds a lot of false positives. I'm sure I didn't have that many spheres because all I did use was uh, have probably about four or five true targets uh, at my uh, job location outside but we will just uh, leave it be and see if we can still make these uh, scans actually go into their relevant positions. So let's just do an operations registration place scans with targets because we are using the registration or the references because you're going to be inheriting coordinates and there's going to be at least three targets per scan. I do not like to use GPS, I do not like to use compass and I do not like to use inclinometer because you're essentially telling the software to use only targets to register the scans. So let's hit OK. And uh, without too much trouble, it gives us a nice report saying these are the targets that we actually matched from all of the ones that we have over here. So we didn't have to do too much work identifying which target was what, but we can see that this one was one of the targets, these two were the other two, there's another one over here, and carry on. So this is where it's nice that even though we had a lot of false positives in identifying these targets, uh, the software has the ability to pick out the good ones and actually identify them, rename them to the relative name and put them in the right place. So if we look at our scans right now, this is a standard message that usually says, okay, there's too large of a coordinate system that was uh, applied to uh, the scans and um, scene just needs to uh, do a little bit of cleanup after that and rearranging, but usually say yes and it doesn't really mess anything up. but Notice this, I have a scan that is on this side of the road and then I have another scan which is much further down. Just out of curiosity, what we can do is go roughly, we're talking over, well, 1000 feet distance. So you know that these scans definitely cannot have anything in common yet if we look at them and we fly back towards the other scan 
we can first of all see our easting and our northing and our elevation but we can also see that apparently the other scan didn't just fall into place into a random position but without using GPS, without using compass, without using an inclinometer came to rest in the right location of the actual project. Now needless to say this will not work if you do not have enough targets per scan and you notice that I have three targets for scan number one and then there's at least the three targets for scan number well 13 over here to be able to register without any adjacent targets or any adjacent data so if you do not have this many scans and this many target positions this might not be as easy but again you would probably get into doing this with the knowledge of that that's what your goal is when you're doing a roadway for example when you're going long linear scans or doing long linear scans then you would want to use either higher resolution for your scans or start densifying your control on each side of the road so just for fun uh, let's see where these targets are so this one's over here I like to do another one here and just as a common sense and you can see that these are all the false positives which you can get rid of oh, because it was a rock face and that's fairly close for seeing to be able to identify targets but that's just telling me that my control worked properly and I don't have to worry about adjusting anything and you can start dropping more points in or in this case um, bring in the, the, the remaining scans which are 2 through I think 17 or however many we had but that's it that's pretty much it now you, it's up to you if you want to save and just export into recap or colorize and export into an RCP project directly.